Yo, to be honest, I'm working with a monster. Hey, yo. No, but seriously, right? It's, it's huge. I mean, if we're being honest, it's pretty big. I, I can't use it, though. I mean, obviously, look, it's a monster. Look at the size of that thing. Yeah, but it's, it's not bad. I can't get it up. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that. I can't really relate, but I might know something that can help. Wait, actually? Yeah. It's not going to take long. Watch this. Watch this. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah! You feeling big now? For whatever reason, GM decided to revive the Hummer brand, a line of cars that wasn't ever particularly great at doing anything but being big and noticeable. And last year they revived it in the form of an EV pickup truck. This year they're back at it again in the form of an electric SUV. So today we're gonna find out if filling out that extra space makes it a more practical purchase and how much size really matters. Okay, so driving the Hummer EV SUV in the rain. This is going to be an interesting experience. Uh, this is the first time I've done one of these car trips where it's just like torrential downpour. It's quite awful, honestly. So let's talk about this thing. This is a 9,000 pound electric behemoth. And somehow this car can do zero to 60 in under four seconds. I haven't yet tested that completely. I've done a couple of pulls from a stoplight and stuff like that, but not just a straight up launch control. Driving this thing is interesting. It feels like you're driving a school bus. It's very unwieldy to, to deal with in, in tight turns, especially moving slowly. But at the same time, it's very confident in how it maneuvers. It has a better turning radius than a lot of larger EVs that I've tested, Teslas included. And that all comes down to the independent four wheel steering and which we'll get into a little bit later. This thing can do something called a crab walk, which if you're familiar with the pickup truck version of this, you know, that's quite an interesting thing to see from the outside. But speaking of the outside, the design, I like it personally. I wasn't too big of a fan of Hummers of the past. I think they're kind of ugly, but I think this mod takes the same overall design language and modernizes it a bit for the EV architecture, I guess. It's very aggressive, it's got the, the big military tank vibes. And it's just a big boy, it's just a big boy. I think it's honestly the ultimate compensation tool for people who feel like they're a bit small, you know? Homie's got three. Who needs two when you can have three men? Three wipers. So we already have the Hummer EV pickup, but this is the SUV version. So what makes it actually different? Well. It's an SUV. But even though there's no truck bed, there's no third row seating. And that's one of the things I thought was going to be in this vehicle, a third row of seats, but there isn't. So more or less, you just have this space right here. As you can see, we have our luggage inside. And that's basically what the inside of this thing looks like. There's not a whole lot going on back here. And honestly, for how big this thing is, it's not a crazy large space, to be honest. Me personally, I think the pickup is probably a more practical choice just because you can just throw stuff in the back whereas this you have to deal with the trunk door and all that although i do like the fact that this door is automated so we just hit this button right here and it closes i do like that a lot so i'd say if you just aren't a fan of the pickup truck vibe this is a a nice option i like the styling of this a bit more it kind of has the more armored truck vibe whereas the ev pickup version was more of an ev pickup but from what i know there aren't any technical benefits of going with the SUV versus the pickup. I think it's just different styling basically. So not that big of a difference. We've got these massive tires on here. The wheels themselves are not very big. I believe we have 18, 17s or 18s, but these massive off-road tires because we've got the off-road pack, which is a $10,000 option. I think buying this without the off-road pack makes zero sense because without it, there really isn't much that's special about the car or makes it a worthwhile purchase for a hundred grand. Let's keep in mind that this car is not cheap. It's 
a hundred thousand dollars basically and so you got to be very serious about <laughs> your enthusiasm for a, a hummer product the interior is definitely a step up from hummers of the past i think the original hummers the h3s and all that i think they're garbage on the inside quite honestly i think they look like crap i think they look like any other just cheap generic gm car you could buy but this is unique i think it stands out compared to a lot of other evs for sure it's not super minimalist like a tesla or some of the newer bmws but it's not doing too much and i think from a functionality perspective you have a good combination of physical controls for your climate but still enough digital controls to make you feel like you're in something that's new and modern and tech oriented there's a lot of things in this car that you'll find on other GM products, including some of the cheapest electric GM products like this digital to manual rear mirror switch. That's something I had in the Chevy Bolt, which I just had like a few days ago. Also these media controls on the steering wheel. You've got your volume up and down and your skip in previous track on the same place that a paddle shifter would typically be. You can tell that they you know, grabbed a lot of parts from the old, reliable GM parts bin, which isn't a bad thing, but it just reminds you that this vehicle isn't completely bespoke in terms of the way they design things. And I think that that's, I think that's smart from a manufacturing perspective. Keep it easier and, and lower on cost from an R&D standpoint, which in turn makes the vehicle cheaper, even though this car is not cheap at all. One thing I do like about this car is something that a lot of EVs have not committed to, and that's having a frunk. So I think we can open it with this button here. And it opens all the way on its own, which I like. When coming to the front end and taking a look at how much space we have in here, it's definitely not as much as what we've got in like the F-150 Lightning, for example. That's definitely a more roomier vehicle as far as the frunk space. I'm still having to get used to saying that word. But something that I do think is interesting and something that we did test yesterday, there's a little green button in here that shows an illustration of a human jumping out of the frunk and it's an escape button. So if by chance you are kidnapped and thrown into the frunk of a Hummer EV SUV, you can hit this little green button and you should be able to escape, hopefully. Let's just observe the madness here. We are literally two inches from touching that. And I'm not sure if there are sensors that are preventing it from raising higher, but that is absolutely insane. So I think we should be able to close it like this, or not. But we can close it with a click of a button, which is very convenient, has soft close functionality. I definitely like the front capability on this thing. One of the better perks. So a lot of people, I'm sure, are interested in the off-road capabilities and are aware of what that's like. But I'm sure a lot of people are also curious about what it's just like driving as a regular car. It feels like you're driving a school bus with no room on the inside. I think that's probably the most accurate way to describe it. You're very high up off the ground. Right now we're in normal mode and it feels like I'm above pretty much every other normal car on the road. But it, it's, it's, it's calm, you know, obviously it's an EV, it's quiet, but it doesn't necessarily feel relaxing just because you know you're moving so much weight around in here. But I think that's also what's impressive about the car is that it carries so much weight, but can move it around <laughs> with ease when you wanna get on the pedal. I was gonna say get on the gas, but there is no gas in this car. When we floor it, like you feel the entire car the front end just lift up like a, I'm trying to think of, is there an animal that does that? Like when it goes like forward? I'd say like a dog with the zoomies. Shout out to Mac, we love you Mac. You feel the entire vehicle just lift up. It's an event for sure. And I'm sure when people are seeing it on the road, they're, they're freaking out. Uh, yesterday we were driving up to Napa Valley from San Francisco and there was this dude in this BMW sedan who was definitely enthusiastic about the car. He kept flying by us to just get a general shot of the car. I think he was egging us on to do flybys. We got on it a little bit, you know, did a, a quick little highway pull, and he was, he was very pleased, gave us the thumbs up out the window. He probably should have been paying attention to the road, but he was, his eyes were glued on this thing. This car has a lot of road presence, that's for sure. And I think if you want something that's big, noticeable, 
stands out from a design perspective, just grabs everyone's attention. This is a car to do it. So allegedly, this car can do zero to 60 in under four seconds, despite it weighing more than two and a half Honda Civics. Let's find out. This car is so freaking massive. But on the inside, you've got like as much space as any standard five-seater SUV. It's really not a crazy amount of space back there uh, in the front seat or in the back seats. Let's take a look inside. As you can see, there isn't a huge amount of space back here. And it just leaves me wondering why make something so big that isn't really that practical from an interior standpoint. So really with the SUV version, you're kind of losing a bit of practicality just because you don't have that large truck bed in the back where you can just throw stuff back there. And so I think you really go for the SUV if you just want the looks because from a practicality standpoint, it's not doing a whole lot more. In fact, it's taking away a little bit. One of the more interesting features of this car is its ability to crab walk. So that's what we're gonna do right now. Hit this little crab button right here, hold it, and then there's an animation that pops up on the screen. Now we are in crab walk mode. And we are just moving from side to side. Wow, this is crazy. I have a GoPro on the outside and I'm not sure how well it's picking it up, but it is quite rad. <laughs> the dude's just looking at me like in awe. Yo, I've never experienced anything like this in a vehicle before. It's very controlled. There's no normal driving situation where you're gonna be on the street and need to crab walk, but man, is this cool. Just shifting from side to side with ease. That independent wheel steering is just, it's, it's working its magic right now for sure. And this is, I gotta say, easily the most interesting feature that this vehicle has from a driving perspective. How does it feel as a passenger <laughs> just swaying from side to side? Homie, this feels weird. This is trippy. Like, the fact that we are facing forward yet moving side to side is, is wild. And there's no trick to it you just move the steering wheel left to right the crazy thing is like crab it, walk it is raining and stuff so it feels like we're like the main character in a movie like we're <laughs> like we're going out here to, to beat the struggle yeah and we're just whoa i might have just hit that bush there <laughs> but uh yeah that is the crab walk um easily the weirdest driving feature in a vehicle i've ever experienced So we did the crab walking, we did the launch control, and there are a bunch of other modes in the car that are really niche. Uh, we, have, we have an off-road mode, we have a, a towing mode, a bunch of utilitarian-oriented features in this car that really have nothing to do with day-to-day -day driving or change the experience for that. One of the major features that all of the GM reps and stuff were talking about on this press junket was the Super Cruise feature, which is essentially a semi-autonomous driving mode that allows you to be hands-free on the freeway and kind of just kick back and relax. Um, and there are sensors that pay attention to when you're looking at the road. And I've been told, like, if you do little things like tape, take a sip of a drink or something like that, it may be like, hey, pay attention. So it's very attentive, um, but this is all secondhand information because I haven't been able to try it myself. Um, we've just been busy filming other things with the car, but we're now on a major highway. We're on the I-80 heading back down to San Francisco, and I hit the Super Cruise button on the steering wheel, and it says unavailable, no road information. So despite being on what I would assume is a pretty major, you know, freeway, pretty major road that a lot of people traverse on, we got no Super Cruise, so maybe GM doesn't like San Francisco. 
despite them holding an event here. I don't know what's going on. It also could be a glitch in the matrix, so to speak, where it's just bugging out. Maybe it's supposed to know the I-80 and doesn't. Either way, kind of disappointing that we can't test it out, but is what it is. So we're in a parking garage right now. Take a look at how this thing barely fits. This right here is the cutoff. And so if you were to pop the roof off and stick your hands up out, you would literally just be able to touch the ceiling like this. This is just one example of how you truly have to be committed to owning a car this freaking big because there's gonna be so many challenges that you're gonna face on the daily as far as trying to just maneuver this thing and use it like a regular car. It is absolutely massive. I, I'm sure you can tell by scale, I'm probably looking quite tiny. And that brings me to the point of why do you buy this, right? Because really where this car shines is in its off-road capabilities, the crab walking, the extraction mode, things like that. Outside of that, it's just honestly an incredibly inconvenient <laughs> electric car because trying to use it like a regular car, like I said, is a challenge when driving around on normal roads. You constantly have to worry about, am I too far out on this side of the lane? Am I out of the lane entirely just because of how wide this thing is? Getting it into parking garages, parallel parking on the street. All of that's to say, are you sure all of the things that this thing can do as far as the off-road capability, the crab walking, is all that worth taking on the daily challenge of dealing with something this unwieldy of a car? <laughs> thank you, thank you. So that's basically about it for the Hummer EV SUV. We didn't have a whole lot of time to really sit with the vehicle and learn it, but we got to experience, I guess, the coolest things you can given the current circumstances. This isn't a full review, more of like an experience video, but I don't know if I can recommend it as like an everyday car. If you're not the type of guy to go off-roading every weekend, tow stuff all the time, unless you just want something big and kind of ridiculous and goofy, but in a good way, uh, I think it's, it's an interesting car, but just not for me, especially for like over a hundred grand. But thanks to GM for sending us out and thanks to Dante for helping me film because definitely couldn't have done it without him. That's about it. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you in the next one. They want to be in it. I mean, honestly, it won't be that, they won't be that audible. They'll be audible, but it won't be that audible. Might just add some needed... Well, the world needs to know how yeah. big it is, you know? The world needs to know... Everyone needs to know. The size, the width, the presence. Everybody needs to know. I mean, that's what we're here to discuss, right? Yes, absolutely.